We are here on the sound check. One, two, three. You've tuned in to the A-plus Coaching Corner with yours truly, Carvel Monroe. Here you're going to get VIP coaching that's virtual, interactive, and practical. Listen, I began my life change decades ago, and I'm still pursuing greatness today. I've been involved with mentoring programs since 1999. That's when I won my first award and I was featured in the Harvard Gazette for volunteering in the Cambridge Public High School. Since then, I've directed multiple mentoring programs on the East Coast. I've owned and operated a decent small business, working with my hands. I have 20 plus years in the marriage game, raising three children, and I've supported many others all the way to adulthood. I have taught people facing some tough circumstances, even in the county jail. But today, I am here just for you in the A Plus Coaching Corner. Well, you've heard my rap. You have heard it here. So we're live and we're bringing you another segment. If you look for us the last two weeks, we were on the road. So I'm Carvel Monroe, host of the A Plus Coaching Corner. I'm hoping you're thirsty. I'm hoping you're hungry. I'm hoping you're seeking because I can meet you there. If you're not, then... This is just going to go in one ear and out the other. So today I have up here anything is possible to remind me we're going to do a special segment. I have uh, multiple segments that I like to do on the show just to keep it fresh. So welcome, everybody, whether you are watching on um, the YouTube, we've added it to the YouTube. We have it on the Twitch. And obviously, if you just want to go to something consistent, you can always go to CarvelMonroe.com, hit that live stream button and just engage. So we're going to kind of roll today because I want to make sure I can do my part, share my gift with you so that you can be encouraged, you can be strengthened, you can feel like your fire is, you know, you're blazing on the inside. Why? Because you want to be able to keep working through 
the, the, the drudgery, the mundane, the, the feelings, everything you feel that might be holding you back. So today I kind of want to help you make a connection with where you are and where you're going. And I'm going to use this segment that I called, um, I like to call it a, uh, what does I call it? Anything is possible. And so when I do the anything is possible segment, I like to draw something from whether it's from the headlines, from history or something close to home. Why? Because I like to share stories. When I got involved in the formal um, aspect of mentoring, like it says in my intro, in 1999 at the public school, one of the, the, the tasks given to me was to share current events, right? And I used to use current events to reach my target audience, which at the time were high school students who were considered at-risk youth, right? You know, children just exposed to hardships, just probably like you and I were. But anyhow, so I use current events to make as a bridge to connect with those young teens and, and, and just try to make sense out of life. And it's the same concept I'm doing here um, in 2023. OK, and so today the headline that I'm drawing on is a recent one that I just spotted the other day. I don't really go too long. I like to feel like I have a gift in this. I can just mull something over. So there was this article that I popped up right here on the screen that talks a little bit about this man. Um, who literally went on a trip, and I'm just going to give you the overview real quickly. He went on a trip to New Zealand. Now, he's from Portland, Oregon. He went on a trip to New Zealand, and he encountered an experience um, which he found a man on the seashore in a little hut, whatever, selling ice cream, right? It was an ice cream that was mixed with, it was mixed with fruits, and ice cream, right? And he put it in this machine and it was like the perfect blend. And, and through that experience, this guy who I have on the screen here, I'm gonna just call him Nick right there. His name is Nico. Um, he had this experience, an eye-opening experience that he says, hey, look, this is some good stuff. And basically from that encounter, it changed uh, his the trajectory of his life. So basically it uprooted his career his career plans and all that he had. And he went back to the States. He went back to the big Island, right? He left um, New Zealand, uh, which he only went by the way. And I'll, and I'll go into that um, for three weeks. He was on vacation and he left and he came back to the States and he basically had this aha moment. And he says, look, this is going to be my ticket. I'm going to use this thing to do something big. So obviously I've got the headline on there. It says 23 year old ice cream empire brings $650,000 a year, right? And it goes into that. I love when they always do these years, how old the person is. I don't want to get into the ageism thing. We know that anything is possible regardless of what age you are, whether you're, you're 23 like this man or you're 63 like me. I'm joking. I'm not there yet. But you get the idea. Anything is real impossible. So don't ever feel discouraged when you see these things like the 30 under 30 and you say, well, gee, I'm over 30. Is, is it over for me? Right. Or whatever they want to call it, 40 over 40. You know, they're going to always come up with these little gimmicks, I call them, to make it clickable and to appeal to a particular audience. But even in that, the culture itself can just beat us over the head, even though it's trying to uplift another group of people or motivate people. Yes, you can do it um, by the time you're 30 or before you're 30. But you know what? We all bloom. We all blossom at different times. And if it's one thing you've heard me say, and you'll probably hear me say it again, we blossom in different seasons. So don't you ever be discouraged and don't you ever uh, take your eye off the ball. I hear one person shares a story about um, the difference between an elephant and a dog and a dog can pop babies out, you know, within a year. Right. And they can pop multiple babies out in that one litter and so and so can cats right but an elephant takes a lot longer to produce the baby that it's carrying right and you know an elephant is a big gigantic thing right and it lasts and it lives for longer it's stronger and so on and so forth so just remember what you're giving birth to may be just like that person right be just like that elephant you're bringing forth something bigger and broader so let me take this story now that I'm talking about and I'm just pulling nuggets out so to speak so hopefully you can relate and I want you to bear with me right whether you watch this now or later bear with me because some of the things that I'm going to talk about you might say well that's not me but hold on there's another side to this as I work through and just in case you're wondering I won't be longer than an hour and and, and I'm going to try to put a little timekeeper up here 
just in case you're watching and you're fidgeting, you get the thing and you want to, I don't know, do something else. Or you're wondering, when will this end? Let me see if I can just do that. I'm going to put the counter on right there so you know I won't be longer than that. And hopefully we can get it in. So, so we're talking about the story. I gave you the little um, synopsis or the little summary of it, what's going on. This guy, Nick, goes on his trip. Boom. And basically, he gets this eye encounter experience. And so I'm going to pull this down real quickly. And I'm going to begin to just give you five points before I flip to what I call the B side, because, you know, there's multiple sides of a story. So this story is being told for, from the reporter about this guy. So the first thing I want to say is you need to get out of your normal routine. That's one of the nuggets I want to pull. He was going on a trip. This guy, Nick, was going on a vacation. It was supposed to be a three week experience over there in New Zealand. Right. Over, uh, I think, a thousand or fifteen hundred miles away from home. His plan was just to go there. He already had other plans. But for some reason, him ex getting out of his normal routine did something for him. Him leaving the comfort zone of of where he was, although he was just planning on making it a temporary trip. This alone was something to kind of shake up his experience. And you know that we are creatures of habits, right? Creatures, human beings. We, 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 we just kind of build habits out of anything we do, anything we put our hands to, anything that we, um, you know, find ourselves doing. We can create habits and habits are great. Habit keeps you disciplined. Habit keeps you moving forward. Habits keep you doing the thing you need to do so that you are always making progress. But there's also a part of habit that it kind of creates this almost it desensitize us to other things, right? It kind of puts the, the blinders on when we're doing habits and we could have really great habits, but we kind of get sitting in these great habits, right? Or good habits and good habits can prevent us from becoming great habits or discovering great things. And so we want to be careful and you want to be careful that your routine um, may just put you in those places that you don't see anything more. You're not challenged anymore. You know, you're just doing the same old thing. And you need to take a break. You need to take a break. I used to love taking my uh, vacation earned um, time at a particular time of year when I just get away. And my getting away wasn't saying I'm never coming back. <laughs> I know sometimes employers might fear when you kind of lump up your vacation that might be in the back of their heads. But my thing was just to let go of my responsibility, right? I don't, I'm not responsible anymore. Not in this moment. I'm gone. I'm unplugging. I want to be wherever I want to be on the beach, whatever your thing is. And that does something for us. It refreshes us. It caused the weight to be gone. And usually what tends to happen or what happened with me, I came back with more power, more vigor, with fresh eyes, so to speak. I can see things differently. Right. And so you want to sometimes create interruptions for your routine. And sometimes we don't do it enough. And circumstances have a way of doing it for us, right? And so um, when I mean circumstances, sometimes we get interruptions that we didn't plan on. And those interruptions force us to kind of break the routine, okay? So get out of your routine. I know that's really simple. Let's keep the ball rolling. And along with the getting out of your routine, number two, I say you need to widen your circle of intake. Widen the circle of intake. So I shared this story before about Tesla, for example, you might not be a Tesla fan. I hope you're not one of those people going out there keying those Tesla cars because that seems to be a thing. <laughs> Don't know why. Tesla owners are not snobby. But Tesla, I, I shared the story before. You know, there was years ago when Tesla was like, the stock was valued for like under $50. I've shared this in my community. And and I had plenty of money, I would say. Not plenty, but more discretionary money. You know, when the bills are paid, and, and, and you're okay. You know, you're either going to go spend this money on fast food or you're going to spend this money on entertainment. But I've had money I could pick up several stocks of Tesla and it wouldn't break the bank. Quite a bit of stock when it was under 50 bucks. Now, here comes time that time has passed. And next thing I realized, the, tex the Tesla stocks blew up to whatever it was, $600, $700 over, over time. And I'm thinking, my goodness, years ago, if I'd invest in that, I'd be pretty good right now. Now, the reason why that didn't happen is because, you know, my intake, my circle of intake was very small, very small. Right. And so I was around people that just look like me or they thought like me or we were just all in the same thing. And for example, I've been in the nonprofit or education and education space for a while. So we were all just on this vibe. But, you know, I needed somebody in my circle as well who could say, hey, 
here's another idea going on over here. But the idea is just when you widen your circle of intake, you can get more revelation, more insight, more knowledge, right? Something you might not be paying attention to, you can get in that moment. And if you want to realize the real truth that anything is possible, this has to be something that you have set or, or, or in your circle, right? So widen that circle of intake. That means you might need to belong to other communities. You might need to plug into other communities. One of the reasons why I stream on, on, on Twitch, which is predominantly known for a gaming community, because I know there are people in that space who are, are, are locked into one way of thinking, and it's not bad. They might say, hey, this is how I'm going to make my ticket. This is my ticket out of here. And, and so they get locked in. And if we don't have people in other spaces, you'll never be discovered, right? Most of us, if you look at circles where you go, you can pretty much characterize some of the people in your circle if you just, that's all you plug in. But one of the things that I've had been forced to do over the years is, is plug into various different circles, right? So widen your circle of intake. So for this guy, Nick, when he went to New Zealand, although it was just a vacation, it was a different experience for him. He observed a different culture. And in that culture, they were doing ice cream a little differently. <laughs> Do it differently. They were doing something differently than he was used to. He later on, which I'm going to dive into, if you, he says, I'm not really, I was not really into ice cream before this. But because things were done differently here, it kind of piqued his interest, right? He saw it done a little differently. Let's go one more in. We're not going to believe at that point. You have to convince money to commit to your cause you have to convince money to commit to your cause now why did i say that right there very simple let me read a little bit of the article just to give you a little bit more of what is happening in his in his thing and 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 i hope my article didn't disappear so bear me with me when i say you have to convince let me read what what goes on here so i'm gonna skip a little bit from the article and in case you're wondering it's the same article i'm reading it says um, so Nico was 18 years old when his six week trip to New, New Zealand, he's 18, his six week trip to New Zealand completely uprooted his career dreams after ordering a treat from a small cart in the coast on the coast. Verga or Nick watch the vendor dump the vanilla ice cream and fresh fruit into the top of the vendor dump uh, in the top of the machine, the cool machine. And it produced a perfectly blended combination of two uh at the bottom so basically the vendor put ice cream and fresh fruit in it went through this little machine and at the very bottom it came out nice and yeah gooey and whatever okay so in 2021 just three years later right nick launched his own cart selling new zealand style real fruit ice cream in portland oregon so so you get the idea all right so i'm gonna skip down a little bit and he says it's funny i am not a huge guy on ice cream he says i'm admitted that's what he says but this thing shake it off but this is the part that hits this point where he says convince money to commit to your cause right this is the point that i want to pull out he said bringing his vision to life meant emptying his bank account right he says he started his company get this with twenty five thousand dollars of his life savings <laughs> i love it you know <laughs> I like to laugh sometimes because sometimes you're out there having a hard time not knowing how people are doing what they're doing, right? You hear the saying, it takes money to make money. It is really true. Now, it doesn't have to be your money. We know we people talk about that, other people's money and all that kind of stuff, but it does take some level of money. Now, I don't care if you want to start with a dollar and, and you know, we know they got those things out there and you can work your way up until eventually it becomes, uh, you know, a hundred million dollars, but it's going to take money to make money, all right? And so he starts with 25,000 of his life savings at 18 year old. How many 18 year olds out there have $25,000? Yeah. So the, the article got, goes in a little more to says, so his savings came from investment into stocks like Apple, speaking of which, and Amazon, um, and 10,000 from his uncle. So, you know, we don't know the history here, but sometimes we do know everybody's at a different socioeconomic status. We do know that there's blue money. We do know that there's hand-me-down money. We do know there's a, uh, people have trust funds and things like that. And we know that some people have to start from scratch. Some people are just here um, starting out with the basics. Some people don't have the legacy of, 
what someone had back in 1608, right? Some people were not allowed to have and accumulate wealth or own property. We know that, especially in the States. So we can see some of these issues that has really come down the pike. And I'm not here making excuses, but we do want to level the playing field. So you might not have the same thing. So don't turn me off yet. I understand. Trust me. I'm fresh off the banana boat, as they used to say in, in middle school when they tease me coming from Jamaica. I am fresh off the boat, even though I didn't take a boat to get to America. <laughs> but I get it. You know, there's no uh, nest egg that was laid up for me. When I got married, I tell the story. I got an iron, not even an iron board, if I can remember. And I think it was just prophetic meaning you can have to iron out your own wrinkles. So if you're talking about somebody who had to work out of a corner, no hint to my A-plus coaching corner, or someone who had to work out of a small place, I get it. I get it. So, but we have to press through with all that we have, right? So let's go in with this story. So he has this money from a combination of his Apple stock, which they said his mama and his parents got him into investing when he was young. So there's a lot of backstory. There's always two sides to the coin. We're just playing the first side now. And so from that, he went on. So here we saw when I'm saying you have to convince money to commit to your cause, right? You have something you want to do. You have something you want to achieve. No matter where you are, we are all striving to go what? From glory to glory. We're trying to get better. We're trying to do something more. I get it. I'm there too. But it takes money and we need people to invest. I think in another episode, I talk about this R&D phase, this research and development phase. And really what we need, what you and I need, what entrepreneurs need, we need, you know, money, right? To kind of to kind of keep us in space, to keep us in that place where we can keep on working that thing until it comes to fruition, right? So you need to convince money, Notice I said people, I didn't say people, convince money to commit to your cause. Speaking of which, look, you can go to my website at coachingcorner.com right there if you'd like, and you can contribute to my cause, right? Put your money to my cause. I've been doing this. This is year three. That's my banner at, over my head, right? Oops, sorry. Over my head, right there. Year three of me doing this virtual um, um, story sharing coaching right so when i left where i was in 2019 and i wanted to leave an opportunity for people who knew me to stay be able to stay connected and still digest consume some of what i have so this has been my service that i began since then so that if you like what i used to do in person you can always find an outlet to get some of it in a different form but virtually now, if you're looking for something deeper, something more instructional, I don't do too many of those on live anymore. I do those. Go to uh, cscope2020.com and you can get all kind of training there. Well, not all kinds, but we have some specified stuff for the summer. I'm focusing mainly on well, parents who are doing homeschooling or are interested in just having a greater influence in their child life. And, and that doesn't mean you have to be the teacher, but we can teach you some things there. But that's on another shell. So convince money to get to your cause. His uncle gave him 10,000 um, to help him do what he needed to do. We got that. Okay, let's do another point now before we run out of time um, and I can backtrack, but let's move fast. Build on your foundation, right? So when I mean, when I say build on your foundation, I'm not gonna talk about Nick's revenue and all that, but let's go in and want to, a little bit more into his backstory. Many teenagers don't have, I'm reading from the article, many teenagers don't have a thousand dollars in their savings. We got that, right? But he talks about how he worked, his mother worked as a private investigator and for introducing him into investing at a young age. He says his mom taught him a lot about money, blah, blah, blah. And she says things um, about investing, right? So he had some of that into his background. He had some foundation into investing and things like that. And we all know knowledge, much of it is transferable. This is why I say, don't doubt for a moment that where you are and what you're learning is not valuable. Knowledge is transferable. So all that you're learning now, you don't know how that will be used in your future, in tomorrow, 
to connect and build your dreams. So learn what you need to learn now. I, you know, I need to dive into this a little bit more next week on the next session because we won't be able to get into it some. But I want to encourage you never to shut down learning. You know, there's this big talk about college and, 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 and higher learning. Is it worth it just going to a No, listen, everything you learn, if, you're, if you are focused and targeted, it's going to be used, right? So the story tells here how his mama just kind of got him into investing and his people got him into that, right? Taught him a lot of that when he was 14, 15 years old. He started investing in stocks and he started doing his own research, right? So it goes into here when I say build on your foundation. He, he, he had a little bit more in here that talks about why he got into business, but we won't get a little bit too deep into that. But the bottom line that he didn't just start business ideas and invest in. You see what I'm saying? And so he built on that. So whether you are, if you are an adult, you need to look back at some of the things that you have learned and maybe you already know and keep building on them. I tell people I've been doing video for some time now, right? I've been building on it. I just started live streaming in 2020. But before live streaming, before 2020, I've always been doing video production and I've always been working with people. I've always been mentoring and, and, and organizing mentoring and coaching basically and, and, and what I call learning and development. Now, there's a whole nother story because certain titles aren't given because of the pay it associates with. Ooh -wee. But society can do a lot to hold you back. But I can't even get into that. See, it's just overflowing. So build on your foundation. Uh, today, if you're wondering, I am still building on my foundation. One of the reasons why I play the role in that I do. So people know that I didn't just begin this journey. Since 1999, I've been doing this thing. It just might take a different mode, right? This keeps going. Let's one more point before we go to the B side, right? And the last one that I've got here, five points. Pay the fine and do the time. Yeah, pay the fine and do the time. What do you mean by that, right? Let me tell you exactly what I mean by that. Within this article, he talks about the investment that he had to make to buy the machine that he saw in this seacoast in New Zealand, the machine that they were using, right? He had to get a little machine. I'm trying to see without getting too distracted. Uh, I need to drop the article in the chat, but I'll do it in the end because I want to just keep flowing for the sake of time. But I'll put it at the end so you can refer to the article if you want. So there's the machine that he saw that was being used to produce the ice cream fruit mixture. And so he had to invest in that. And it says that Nick here, one piece of equipment was particularly important. The ice cream blender made by a Hope, uh, that's the company, New Zealand based company, it's called Little Gem. Little Gem is the name of the machine. I am not a sponsor, so I don't get any money. But anyhow, Nick spent $11,000 on this machine, 11,000 out of this 25,000, I suppose, on this machine, and it, which took him three months to go through customs and ship to Portland. Remember, we're talking about sending this machine from New Zealand, this little island way over there. I'm pretty sure I got a photo of that. Let me just try to change this up. Usually I got a lot more visuals on here. Give me one moment. I'm gonna throw this on the screen real quick because I, I gotta give this visual so you can see. Uh, I just had it open. Hold on, hold on. All right, I'm gonna keep this rolling because I don't know where my uh, screenshots are. It's on my screen. I'll do it after. Give me a moment. So he ships this item and he has to wait three months just to get it to where he's at. Three months. And then on top of that, he had himself a little one, two, three year plan. So when I say to pay the fine and do the time, whatever it is you're looking to do, it's going to cost you. You got to know that. Whatever it is you're looking to do, whether you're starting a business, whether you're raising a family, whether you're looking for love, <laughs> right? Whether you're looking to be famous, you name it. I don't know. I can sit here and ramble off a bunch of things. If you're looking to do anything, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you time. It's going to cost you money. You're going to invest 
sweat equity, as we like to call it, you're going to labor for that. And it's important for you to know that. And if you're an adult, you already know that. Right. And if you are a, a teenager, you probably already know that everything is going to cost you. They say no pain, no gain. Right. No sweat, no get. Make up your terms, whatever you want to call it. Just be ready for that. The reason why we say when you're ready for it, you are more likely to be in for it. Right. You're committed to it. Like I know I'm not going to get all the looks and the responses and, the you know, how I'm hoping. And, and I'm going to go more into this next week because I want to talk a little bit more about what goes on in here in that space. So but if you have in your mind, look, I am going to pay the fine. I'm going to be willing to invest what it costs me to get this right. I paid a, a good sum of money to get some work trademarked. Right. And the reason why I've done that, because I believe in what I'm doing. And not only do I believe in what I'm doing, I want to protect what I'm doing because sometimes you don't realize what you have if you don't protect it and if you don't work on it. Right. And then what tends to happen is you either give it up, you let it go or you take it kind of nonchalant and someone else comes along and, and, and swoop up the bag. Right. So you got to be ready to pay the fine, whatever fine I mean, is whatever the investment is going to cost you, is it going to cost you, you know, years of learning? That's a fine. Right. That's an investment. Of, so, well, well, that's you're going to pay for it, but it's also the time it takes. You know, you don't just get um, you don't graduate high school overnight. It takes you some years. You don't graduate college overnight. It takes you some years. Now, some people can do it quicker than others, but it's still a commitment. And similarly, um, your investment of what you want to do is going to take you some time. So let me pause right here because I got to flip to the, the B side of this. We're, we're literally looking at this guy, Nick, like he is the champion, right? He is the champion. He's done great. Some good things are going on. But literally, we want to talk about a little bit more than that. So. We're going to do that on the backside of this. You've tuned in to the A Plus Coaching Corner with yours truly, Carvel Monroe. Here you're going to get VIP coaching that's virtual, interactive, and practical. Listen, I began my life change decades ago, and I'm still pursuing greatness today. I've been involved with mentoring programs since 1999. That's when I won my first award and I was featured in the Harvard Gazette for volunteering in the Cambridge Public High School. Since then, I've directed multiple mentoring programs on the East Coast. I've owned and operated a decent small business working with my hands. I have 20 plus years in the marriage game, raising three children, and I've supported many others all the way to adulthood. I have taught people facing some tough circumstances, even in the county jail. But today, I am here just for you in the A Plus Coaching Corner. You have been listening to the A Plus Coaching Corner with Carvel Monroe. Whether this is your first time or you're a longtime listener, I want to thank you for your attention to this broadcast. So whether you listen live or on demand, it is my hope that by sharing my story and that of my guests, it will help you to shape your story. All right, so we back on the set. Thank you for joining me on this broadcast today. I'm undoing my points here because we're going to go on the B side. There are two sides to every story. There are two sides to every story. And um, we have to realize that, right? Two sides to every story. So here we're focusing on this guy, Nick, who um, I had that article, uh, the image of before who's just basically telling telling about his experience. Here's his photo right there again. The article is focusing on him, showing what he's able to basically build this ice cream empire at a young age. And so kudos to him because, you know, he stepped out there and making things happen for himself. Awesome. But there's another side to this, right? He's he's not just a man. Like they said, there is, like they said, the turtle doesn't get on the fence by itself, right? <laughs> the turtle doesn't get on the fence by itself. So so what about the guy? Let's think for a moment. What about the guy? Here's here's just an image that I wanted to share of. Ooh, ooh, there we go. I'm shrinking. I'm just showing that little journey, right? That this guy took this 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 journey 
from from the states to New Zealand. New Zealand. Let's think about the guy though who's on, who has the small cart, right? The guy that has the small cart on the coast. Let's think about him for a moment, because in a sense, he's played a role in Nick's success. He's playing a role in what Nick has achieved, right? Now he's not named. They don't say this guy named Sam or whatever, or you know, or Igor. <laughs> on the small coast, but he's also played a role, whether he realized it or not, in Nick's success, although he's not credited in this article. So this guy is there, he's kind of nameless, right? He's doing his thing. And does he realize that he's being watched? Does he realize that he's making this impact or he's made such an impact? Maybe he has, or, or maybe he has not. But I wanted to also highlight him some because, you know, he's also a part in this process. Right. There's a cross pollination going on when I say cross pollination. And this is why I said when you widen your circle. Right. And so Nick is I mean, Nick is able to benefit from this guy um, on the on the coast who's just serving. He's showing up and I'm going to say presumably every day or as routine, he's showing up and he's serving his gift. Right. He's doing what he does best or he's doing something to take care of his family. But whatever he's doing, he's doing it. We know he's doing it with excellence. Right. We know we know he's 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 not just shrugging it off. He's you know, he's doing his thing and he's making an he's making an imprint. Which one of these two are you? Right. Because both are important. Are you the one on the island? Or are you the one on the mainland? Right. We're both there. One of these places, I think, and at different times, you're either the person on you could be the guy on the island who's just showing up, doing something that might seem um, insignificant, right? You might be doing something that seems in insignificant, right? You're just doing, it might feel, I won't say it's meaningless, but it might just feel like a routine you're doing. It might just be like, well, how, how does this really matter, right? And, and I really want you to see that, you know, Nick's success really wouldn't happen in this way if, if he showed up to this guy on the coast and when he asked for this blend, what if this guy just didn't do the right mix, right? And it was either too much fruits or too much ice cream. Then probably Nick would definitely not like, he didn't like ice cream before. Now he would not like fruity ice cream. <laughs> but you get my point. We're not talking about ice cream here. We're talking about what are you doing? What has been given to you to do? Because we all are given something. And I want you to say, realize that whatever it is you're given to do, you want to show up each day or each day that you should show up and you want to do it to the fullest extent. You want to do it with excellence. You want to do it with a smile on your face and love in your heart, as my pastor used to say. You want to do it like that. You want to basically have this joy in your heart, knowing what you're doing is making a difference, right? It's no matter how small or insignificant it is or it might look, that's the approach you want to have. I'm doing this thing. I'm making a difference every day. Every cup of ice cream that I'm filling, so to speak, every time I do this thing, I want to do it with that intensity, that passion, that joy, that commitment that, you know, so I'm showing up on time. Otherwise, I might miss those interactions. I might miss that opportunity to, to make, you know, a greater impact, so to speak. Right. So while we're celebrating the man on the island who discovered this thing and who knows how much money the guy with the small cart on the coast, that's what we're calling him, the small cart guy on the coast, on the island. Uh, we don't know the impact he's made. He's probably made a whole lot more money than, um, than Nick here. Maybe, maybe not, but it's more than the money. His service, his product and his service was able to change the life of someone else. We all know that there's great ideas all over the place. So if you are finding yourself, you could be a mother. It doesn't matter. You could be a father. You could be a child. You could be a young adult, you know, a, a, a senior adult. You could be doing something and you might lose Right. That reality that I'm doing something that's meaningful and it only remains meaningful as long as I show up and give it meaning. Right. So pick your thing. So here's some characteristics I jot down about the guy. The small cart on the coast, 
He's serving his gift, his product. Are you serving yours? Whatever it is. Here I am in this coaching corner. I've been serving it here. Let's just speak to this particularly year after year. I've been showing up and, and serving this gift in this small place is what I like to call it out of a small place. Right. And I've been just sharing my gift, sharing it, sharing it, sharing it. That's what you want to do. I don't know what yours is. You can pick something, whatever you think it is, and you want to share it. Now, I'm not just here sharing it. I'm refining myself. I am learning. I am doing all kind of things that you might not know to make sure that I can show and show up and serve authentically and show up and, and serve with commitment and fire. Right. We talk about being in a small place. Don't be if you're the one on the island. That's who we're focusing on. You might be on an island. You might be in a small place. Right. Don't feel as if it doesn't matter because nobody sees me or not enough people see me or I'm in just this small environment. My impact is not that great. We don't know. We know a lot of great ideas begin in small places. You know, this story is kind of norm to me because there are things that I've seen here in the United States that I know we did it with less technology in the islands. <laughs> And so that's what tends to happen. People come to these places that they call developing countries or 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 third world, they used to say. Right. And they see things that the locals are doing, but the locals are doing it with more raw materials. They're doing it with wood. They're doing it um, with plastic or recycled stuff or, you know, they're doing things like that. And it's happening. And someone goes, oh, wow, look at that. And they come back to the States or they go back to wherever they are that has of more resources available to them and they patent and they they corner the market and they just use the same thing but put a little bit more bells and whistles on it and instead of using the raw wood or the recycled rubber or plastic or whatever they use metals and aluminums and you know refined materials and make it look nice but a lot of these things are coming out of places you'd be very surprised okay so what you have is important and keep working your thing, right? So keep feeding the people, whatever your food might look like, keep feeding them what you should be feeding them because you don't know how that small thing is impacting others, right? You should, you may not know, realize it, but you might be on display. You might be on display. What I'm saying is you might be, uh, being observed by others. Someone might cross path with you and you're going to inspire them or you are, are inspiring them, but it probably won't happen if you have given up on your small place. It probably won't happen if you stop shining your light, so to speak. It probably will not happen because you got off the horse. You gave up, basically. You stopped. And so now someone may not have that moment they need to kind of basically improve the lifestyle for themselves and for others. Okay. I'm gonna leave it at that. But also too, is to realize the power of what you're doing before others come. All right. So I've given this perspective because I want you to see that anything is possible for sure, depending on where you are, anything is possible, but it takes a level of insight and foresight to be able to run that race that you're running. Awesome. So let me take a moment now to kind of make sure I'm bringing it in because I'm going to close out and I haven't really watched any of my chat this morning to see what's going on, but that's good. All right. So we put this, these ideas out here. We put these ideas out here because it's hard sometimes for us when we're doing something that's um, kind of mundane something kind of small and not realizing the level of impact we may have. And we definitely want to make sure that we don't lose sight of that. We definitely want to make sure that we can use that thing and do something great. So take all that you're hearing today and let's go from this story of this ice cream empire builder guy and just say, look, if he can do it with ice cream, we know that every gift is different. Some might not have the same money every purpose you're setting out to do. Some might not yield the same harvest, but what you want to do is make sure whatever your level of quantifying what you're doing, however you measure success, you know, maybe you need to look at that and then just keep going with that. Keep going with it, knowing that it's serving, um, it's going to have a direct impact one way or another, but it's also going to have an indirect impact. 
And the indirect impact, sometimes we don't realize what's the indirect impact because people are not always going to say, hey, by the way, thank you for what you're doing. People might not always say, hey, I appreciate what you said. I don't know if this guy, Nick, ever returned to the guy with the cart on the shore or send him an email or a message or some sort and say, you know what? It's because of you. <laughs> I saw you. You made me a little whatever dollar ice cream fruit mixture and I had that ice cream fruit mixture and you know I never really liked ice cream but that changed my mind and I was able to go back and create my empire xyz you know it's like when people uh they talk about on social media you see that when they say you know people are watching you but they never comment I don't I'm not saying that for you to comment don't comment right now <laughs> you know people are what when you put up your post when you put up your reel when you put up your photo Sometimes people will see it, they won't like it. They'll read your article, they never comment. And sometimes I've made it my, my, my duty when I'm out there in the social space to like a thing, to comment on a thing, to retweet here and there. Oh, speaking of which, I got to give a shout out to Nadia and to M. Laney because usually when I post my coaching corner on Twitter, I get a reaction, I get a reshare, which I appreciate, right? So the turtle doesn't get on the fence, right? You can find them on Twitter. I don't know. I think they're public. So you might want to follow them, right? But but the idea is, though, nobody gets on top by themselves. Nobody gets there by themselves. So people are sharing, people are liking, people are commenting. And that works for me. And, and, and so I'm saying this guy may never return to say a thank you or X, Y, Z. But nonetheless, he made an impact. I think I've put it how I want to put it, and I've covered the the topics that I've wanted to cover, right? Let me just share with you real quickly once more time, one more time. Let's see if I can switch this screen real quickly because I want to make sure that, so I do this here, as many of you know, pretty much. This is my free, free, free. Coachingcorner.com will lead you here. But I also, here's my map I was trying to show before, but I also want to make sure I put it here. Other e-learning design and development opportunities for here on cscope2020.com. So there are classes available on here. And in this season, here in the month of June and July, if there are any parents who are interested in kind of doubling down on getting some greater awareness and knowledge about homeschooling and some of the tricks and tips and strategies, but also to some things from a different perspective. So you can gain some more greater knowledge of just about the learning process in general. It might help you um, be better at facilitating and navigating the homeschool space instead of just relying on curriculum and third party companies. That's just basically going to stick your child in front of a computer or just give them the next book and you're going to be chasing books year after year after year and never satisfied. Then later on in the fall, we are going into more of the PDUs for professionals in the workspace. So I want to put this plug in here just in case you're wondering how the site reads. So anyhow, that's just a little bit of plug I wanted to put because what you're only going to get on this coaching corner are more of these breakdowns. But if you're looking for something deeper, something with more coverage, there's my plug. All right. And so with that being said, I bring this thing here to a close today. We'll be back on the following Thursday, right? Same time at nine o'clock a.m. So I want you to tell someone if you have to and meet me in the place right here because we're going to do more of this. So next week, I really want to go in a little bit a little bit more into this. Um, it, it can build off of this story, but we won't be talking about this story so much. I want to talk about when you're out there, you're doing your thing. And, you know, one of the, the places, hardest places to be in is when you're in between and you're not getting the results you're looking for. And one of the issues some in some spaces, of some culture, we've been primed with this idea of haters, right? There's haters everywhere, <laughs> right? Haters, haters, haters. And, you know, that's the wrong perspective. People aren't hating because we don't get the results we are looking for all the time. People are not hating because things don't manifest the way we hope to manifest. Remember what we said, one of the points we made here is you have to pay the fine and you also have to do the time. 
because there's an investment financially you have to commit. And there's also there's this, this time of laboring for what you desire. If it comes any quicker or any easier, it's probably not what you think. Right. You never want to judge people or be jealous of what people have because you don't know what people have done to get what they have. And sometimes the story is not told fully for you to realize how they got what they got. Right. It's not like they just went out there and things happen. Sometimes some people have more resources than you realize. They're working with a more full deck than you realize. This is not monopoly. We don't just start out and everybody get the same dosage of money to run around the board with. And so if you're looking at what someone else is doing, you might be more easily discouraged, not realizing that they are just benefiting from how they've been structured or how they've been set up. Right. And sometimes there's more beneath the layers and you don't get that all the time. So you think these people are self-made. You think these people got it right. And really it doesn't happen. Right. <laughs> there's nobody that's self-made. None. I don't care what you say, what you did. There's some stuff that's happening behind the scenes that you don't really know or they don't really share. That's just the bottom line. So I want to encourage you to say, look, we're going to find our way through this. We can pull these little nuggets all day when we do these sessions um, and we can pull out any kind of information that we can apply. But it's never an answer. Hey, Vashovani, thanks for stopping in the chat. So on uh, on Twitch. But it's never what you think. Right. So don't ever give up on yourself and thinking your journey is um, your journey is what it is. No, we're all going to labor, but you don't want to give up. You don't want to quit. You don't want to fail. Yes, you want to pivot. Yeah, you might drop some things and eliminate some things or try it new. If you've been a fan or a follower of this show, you know that I've streamed this thing on a Tuesday morning. I've streamed this thing on a Sunday morning. I've streamed this thing on a Sunday afternoon. I'm streaming on a Thursday morning. And what I'm saying, if I had to pivot multiple times to make sure this works for me, and sometimes your dream and your idea, the passion, whatever you're working on, you may need to pivot. It could be your relationship that you are um, protecting or nurturing and trying to see it happen. It could be a relationship with you. It could be a relationship with your child or a relationship with a loved one, a spouse. Sometimes you have to keep pivoting. You have to keep, OK, what do I need to do now? And some of those bullet points like we shared today, sometimes you got to break up the routine. Sometimes you got to widen you know, what you do. Let's do something different. Right. Or it could just be a business. It could be an idea. It could be a career. It could be a choice for higher education. Right. Sometimes you, that's one of it to widen your intake. You probably need to get greater education. So, again, so and I'm not saying that has to be a formal um, college experience. You can also do that. There's a lot of courses or you can find somebody who would be willing to pull you under their wing. Teach me about buying and selling homes. Teach me about um, construction and remodeling. Teach me about, you know, business and investing. Just like this guy, Nick, we shared. His mom did it for him at 18. I know some of us don't all have parents who might have be as knowledgeable, but, but we have so much technology. We have the internet, guys. We have podcasts like these. We have, you know, you can go on and on and on. There is no way uh, or reason for you to be stuck for so long. I'm not saying that you can succeed um, and, but it doesn't mean that you have to be stuck. Yes, please go ahead, Vashani, drop your question in the chat. I know that I've ignored a lot of my thing earlier, but let's do a Q and a before we close out. What's your question? And hopefully it aligns with my nonsense that I've spilled out today. Go ahead and just go ahead and write your question into the chat. And I'm going to do my best to give you something <laughs> that is reasonable. So Vashani says, do you take questions? Yes, I do. So what's your question? Or does anybody else have a question? Don't be bashful. Don't be shy. Just go ahead and put it on before we say bye bye. I'm going to give you a moment while I find. So go ahead and put your question in the chat. I usually do. I like to keep it interactive, as we say. That's what it's all about, being virtual. And I know where my music box is. Oh, here we go. We're not gone yet. 
Drop your questions in the chat. Drop your questions in the chat. Turn, 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 turn. While I look for what I'm looking for. I'm going to play my little closeout. All right, so. So Vashani says, I'm a female, 19, and I just completed my school. What the skills that I require to work on now? Well, that is a broad question. Hold on, let me turn my volume down a little. Sorry about that. That is a very broad question. What should you work on? Let me throw this on here real quick. There's the question, what should I work on? All right, so let's answer this question here. We know that schooling, right, whether it's higher ed, college, university, they're training you for one particular thing. They're, they're getting you ready for whatever your major has been, right? And if you're 19 in high school, it doesn't matter. You have to decide, the question is, what do you want to do? I know it's kind of the, probably the question people don't want to answer, but what do you, what's your passion? What area do you want to be in, right? Because success can come by any which way. And so you really have to decide what is it you want to do and look at what you're good at, but don't just work on your strength. I like to say, what do I need to do to make sure I can do that? So for example, if I'm a tradesman, some people might know this, I have a trades background. I literally have learned how to tile, how to paint, how to build walls, how to take down walls. You get the idea. So that's really my first, that's my training, right? I learned that my father taught me these things. But what I wanted to do while I still did that, I love the business side the administrative side of business. Now, I didn't get that learning per se from my father, although he, he did great in teaching me what he taught me. That's just something I realized I needed to be good at. So you identify something that you might need to be good at. Why did I need to be good at it? Well, if I'm gonna make a deal, if I'm gonna get somebody to give me their money, give me $10,000, $20,000, whatever it is, to do a project for them, if I'm gonna get that, that means I have to be able to have the skills to basically convince them. And so what I wanted to be able to do was to give them a nice proposal, whether it has pictures, whether it has well-written language, right? It's written right. So that's an area I needed to grow in. And so how did I grow in that area? Well, I just kept working at it. I wrote, I designed, I looked at what other people were doing. Um, I got ideas. You don't have to recreate the wheel. So. If you are saying, hey, I just got done with school, awesome. So now the next step is, you're gonna build the skills that's gonna help you support the thing you wanna do. So whatever your thing is. Here's video production, for example. This took a little bit of video production. I did not go to any school for video production, but I started playing with video production years ago with some cheap cameras, way before phones were recording, get the idea. So how did I grow my video production skills? Well, I'm watching other people's videos, right? I watch other people's videos. I actually invested in a book. <laughs> I won't put it on screen, but I just bought it to 20 bucks or something like that. And I learned, I just read and I kept shooting videos and I kept trial and error, my own research and development phase. So if you just finished school, you're gonna do the same thing. School's only gonna teach you what they're designed to teach you, but that's fine. Now you say, whatever it is I wanna do, I'm gonna start doing what I wanna do and what's gonna accompany, what should accompany what I wanna do? What am I gonna to do to support what I wanna do? What am I gonna do on one side to make me better at doing this on the other side? And some of it comes through practice, obviously doing it over and over. It's almost like you're just running a, um, that scenario over and over again. So for example, I've been talking on camera for some time. So I believe I'm a little bit more proficient at it. I don't say I'm the best, but I'm proficient at it because I've been talking on camera for years over and over. So some of what you do is practice. So what skills 
do I need to work on right now? Well, work on the skill that of what you want to do. I would love to ask, what is it you would want to do? If you are still with me, Vershani. If you can tell me that, then I'll tell you exactly, <laughs> probably. But you get the idea. So whatever skill, I'm gonna just keep doing that thing and I'm gonna add to it. Do that thing and add to it. How are we doing? We still really got about four more minutes before the one hour mark. I know my zero on the clock. So if you've got anything else, please put it in while the music plays. You got three minutes on this drum. So that's what I would do. I think I answered that question. I can tell you too many different ways. When I got out of high school for us here in the United States, I started to work <laughs> and I kept working and little over time, even while I was working, I was able to work on my skill of communicating. And so I worked in a biotech company. Um, I worked for a biotech company. But I was working in, I started off in the mail room. I share this story in my blog. I started off in the mail room, literally, well, I started off washing glassware for the biotech lab. But then I started in, I went into the mail room. And in that mail room, at some point, I had to start sending emails, right? And that helped me learn how to communicate. That helped me to deal with hostile <clears throat> or aggressive people who were wondering about when can my package be shipped out stuff like that and why was it not in my mailbox and why you know those kinds of things and so that allowed me to work on what was needed so start right there what is needed what are you not doing or what can you do better start right there and just work on it work on it work on it because as you're surviving as you're surviving where you're planted it's actually preparing you for where you want to go. We call it surviving. The, there's the term that is shared. It might be a cliche. It says blossom where you are planted. So that means wherever you are planted, wherever you are positioned or hired or so on and so forth, you want to blossom there. Work on what you want. So, so she says she's a, she's a civil servant. Well, just I will say that start where you are blossom where you planted look what is needed for you to do what is needed for you what are they asking you to do what is your job asking you to do what is your role asking you to do and then look at that and just work on the thing that will make you better at that role i guarantee you but you have to identify what it is you'll see what it is you need to work on and how to be better Thank you for your love and support and for being here. I appreciate you and I appreciate everybody else who watched and did not comment. That's perfectly fine with me. I just love to be here to want to help people move forward. Look, it doesn't have to be anything bigger than you think it needs to be. Just be your best at it. Be committed to it, right? Whatever it is you're doing, your time will come where you'll get the next level of revelation, the next idea, right? You may have to be like the guy in our story, Nick, who just did his thing. That's all he did. He did his thing until he got a different revelation and he realized like, wow, ice cream can be great. <laughs> and, he, and he found a way to do something. He found a way to do something with his life. To do something more. So as promised, let me drop this last link into the chat before I sign out for the day. Um, I, that's what I'm dropping it in my thingy chat you might be able to see it see bam i dropped it on the twitch stream and i'm done i'm just dropping this here all right i'll see you next thursday guys thanks for stopping by